Well, looks like a decent number of people are interested in how I broke the Pope. So, here goes. On June 28th, 2021, or Pride Day, I created this abomination. Rainbow, Alcharinga, Emperor of China, Holy Roman Empire, Kingdom of God, or Rainbow Pope for short. This was done live on patch 1.31.5.1. So, how did I do this? Allow me to navigate you through the rabbit hole that is EU4 Spaghetti. To begin, we are going to spawn a Papal States without the Papacy reform, and the most convenient nation to do that is Venice. The earlier parts of the gameplay are frankly not so interesting, but I want to mention that we do have to full annex the Papal States in a very specific way, which requires us to spend one initial war against them. Now, right before my second war to full annex the Pope, I perform a sequence that involves unstating a province, raising autonomy to 100%, and then state unstating, which removes the recently raised autonomy cooldown, and finally lowering autonomy. I do this for every province except my capital state, which I cannot unstate, and this helps me spawn rebels everywhere. After full annexing the Pope, I perform a complicated sequence of events. Okay, so let me explain what I just did. It turns out that if the Papal States is revived through Separatists, they do not start with the Tier 1 Papacy reform enacted. Therefore, I wanted to time my release and play as in a way such that the Separatist effect applies in respawning the Pope, but the play as portion would still execute, allowing me to play as a no Tier 1 Papal States. Since letting Separatists enforce normally is time consuming and hard to control temporally, I opted to break myself to Rebels, giving me better control on exactly when the Papal Separatists will enforce. Let me quickly recap how breaking to rebels work. Nations can break to rebels if they have over half their provinces occupied by rebels, have at least one four occupied, and are at peace. This causes all active rebel factions to enforce their demands on the following month tick. Condition 1 explains me lowering autonomy everywhere to ensure that I get as many rebels as possible. Condition 2 explains why I deleted all my mainland forts and used my boats to prevent rebels from crossing over to Venezia, my only fort before the peace deal. This combined with the fact that Roma has a fort allows me to ensure that papal separatists will occupy a province, namely Roma, before I break the rebels. There's one more timing issue however. I cannot select the papal states in the release and play as window if any papal cores are occupied by rebels. So, I had to make sure I open the screen before Papal Separatists siege down the province. Anyway, we do all that just to engineer a Papal States with no Tier 1 government reform, and we'll see later why this is so crucial to the entire run. The following 80 or so years essentially correspond to a typical Papal States gameplay with a slow start. Frankly, there aren't any interesting tricks at play for a while. I simply expand in a sloppy speed 5 manner in order to obtain a solid power base and to enact the Kingdom of God decision. So, let me introduce some preliminary knowledge about what's coming up ahead. The Papacy government reform prevents conversion through peace deals or the religion tab, and the PAP tag prevents conversion through rebels. Similarly, there are restrictions to changing government forms. I already showed you how to remove the tier 1 Papacy reform, but in an ordinary playthrough, it's quite difficult to remove. The Papacy reform prevents enacting any of the Tier 5 reforms that change government type. Moreover, even if you remove the Tier 1 Papacy reform like I already did, a Catholic Papal States cannot change government type to anything other than Theocracy. And you cannot even get to Tier 5 without enacting a Tier 1 reform. So really, the dream of becoming a monarchy still seems quite daunting. So what's missing? First, we must take advantage of the fact that we do not have the Papacy reform and use that to convert out of Catholic using the Religion tab. Then, we would like to enact the Tier 1 reform other than Papacy so that we can enact the Tier 5 reform to flip to Monarchy. We do that by flipping to Swiss Culture, allowing us to select the Swiss Cantons Tier 1 reform. Now, we're able to advance up to the Tier 5 reform and become a Monarchy. We can then convert back to Catholic using the same Religion tab once the appropriate cooldown passes. And voila, I am now a Catholic Monarchy and therefore, I'm eligible to be elected as the Holy Roman Emperor. So the HRE process is not particularly new or special. I simply got elected through diplomatic means, 
And after being elected, I perform a fast revoke strategy to farm Imperial Authority. Here's the brief idea. I join HRE, which grants me 5 Imperial Authority. However, I don't actually join the HRE because my capital is isolated. So I can join HRE again if I have a province outside the HRE. By adding a state to trade company through the trade node interface, I can force provinces in the HRE to leave the HRE. So I do that for each state I own, joining HRE in between, farming crazy amounts of Imperial Authority. For more details, please check out the Lambda Revoke video I made a while ago, link in description. At this point, we're going to flip to Alcharinga. Since the PAP tag prevents religion flip via rebels, we need other techniques. A key observation is that since I do not have the papacy reform, I can flip religions through the force religion peace demand. As long as I'm under 100% war score, I can flip between heretic religions at ease. That of course does not solve the problem fully because Alcharinga is in the pagan group. The trick is to abuse the fact that the cleansing of heresy CB, which requires a nation to fill out religious ideas and to border a heretic, always enables the force religion peace demand. The heretic bit is quite important. There's actually a technical difference between Holy War CB, which is the heathen version, and the cleansing of heresy CB. Therefore, I released Lipan, a totemist nation in Mexico, who I knew will start with religious ideas. I then fabricated a scenario where they will be likely to declare on Chichimeca, a bordering heretic, and following the declaration, I quickly force vassalized Chichimeca, allowing myself to inherit the war and become the defender of the cleansing of heresy war. This importantly still unlocks the forced religion peace demand, so even though I'm not a heretic, I could use this to flip from Catholic to totemist. At this point, flipping Alcharinga is trivial. I simply declare war on an Alcharinga nation and get my religion enforced. No trick is necessary since totemism is in the pagan group, and therefore the forced religion peace demand is always enabled. Perhaps Alcharinga HRE PAP is itself extremely cursed, but I really wanted to go one step further and embrace the rainbow cult in line with the Pride Day theme. Until 1.33, Alcharinga nations unlock cults through a mission tree. Unfortunately, updating missions while remaining the PAP tag is impossible, so I had to form a tag that updates missions. Since PAP is an endgame tag and is unable to form the Roman Empire, which by the way doesn't even update missions, I had to form the Holy Roman Empire, which is precisely why I revoked and became emperor previously. By passing the final HRE reform, I'm able to update my missions, thus opening the pathway to unlocking the Rainbow Cult. The rest is a matter of completing the Alteringa mission tree and embracing the Rainbow Cult. Due to popular viewer demand, I also took the Mandate of Heaven, which doesn't require much creativity since pagan nations are able to obtain the Take Mandate CB. And so you have it, Rainbow, Alcharinga, Emperor of China, Holy Roman Empire, Kingdom of God. As per usual, here are some parting words. There have been a historic tug of war between developers and players regarding the Pope. The developers clearly intended for Pope to be a Catholic theocracy with a special government type, and over the past patches, they have added numerous checks to ensure this invariant. However, we players love to find loopholes in game logic just to mess with the Pope's religion, government, and so on, and this run is our most recent jab at the Pope. I'd like to thank Bast who deserves attribution for much of the theory crafting and initial testing. He was at the forefront of the players who work on breaking the Pope, and I think it would be unfair for me not to give him due credit. To give credit to the developers though, it has become much harder to break the Pope over time. Chances are, if you've seen past runs that break the Pope in some way, that method is long patched. So please, before you leave a comment saying, oh, have you tried XYZ? Yeah, please test on the latest patch. Of course, I'd love to find new strategies on the Pope, but I don't want to clarify for the 10th time that OPM bankruptcy no longer works. The method I outlined in this video still works on 1.33.2, with the exception of the fast rogue, which is not critical. Furthermore, you can actually unlock the Rainbow Cult without the Mission Tree now, making a more pure version of this run without the HRE tag switch easier. Okay, I say easier because yes, there is a theoretical way to force altering emissions on the PAP tag, even on 1.31.5.1. 
It involves crazy things like getting an AI with altering omissions to get elected HRE and pass the final reform in the span of 4 months, all while buffering other sorcery which we ruled out as impractical in an Iron Man run. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and appreciated a summary on how we absolutely broke the Pope, and I think the fact that we can do these sorts of things make EU4 theorycrafting such a delight, and I wish you similarly had fun with the theory. Thank you for your time, and as per usual, I hope you learned something new. <laughs>